like the Beatles more than Jesus Christ. What do you think about that? Hey everybody, the other day we saw Yesterday. Aiden, what is the plot of Yesterday? Uh, yesterday is about a guy who is a loser ma I almost called him a magician. He's, he's, a, lo a, magician. he's a loser musician and he gets hit by a bus right as there's a big blackout. And everyone in the world except him forgets who the Beatles are. And a few other people also don't forget, but they're really not that important. And then he decides to become the world's biggest musician playing Beatles music in 2019. And then he finds out the true power of love. So Connor, what'd you think of yesterday? Yesterday was a two hour movie that felt like it was three and a half hours. It was very that long. Is true. That is true. It was kind of boring. The premise was somewhat interesting, but I do have some problems with it fundamentally. First off, people were like, he'll be the biggest musician ever. If someone came out with the Beatles musician music today, they might be, be they might be doing <laughs> indie radio, but they're not gonna be the biggest pop sensation ever. Second off, the songs that he did, some of his covers were pretty alright. Some of his covers sounded like dog shit. Yeah, I liked and like the more modern version of like back in the USSR, but a lot of them were just kind of crappy. Yeah, a lot of them were kind of crappy. Um, the movie dragged on too long, and it's like, okay, so it really just felt like the people behind this movie were Beatles fanboys and really wanted to suck the Beatles wieners and suck this guy's wiener. And the Pepsi product placement was <laughs> kind of, yeah. they, they kept doing like, does this exist? And it's like, Harry Potter doesn't exist. And it was making me cringe when he's looking up musicians, and it's like, oh, good, Childish Gambino still exists. And it's all, like, these, like, indie bands, and they wanted so to make sure the wokest musician Childish Gambino still exists. Like, who listens to Childish Gambino? And on top of that, like... This movie should have been a comedy where he gets transported to another world, and, like, half of the things he knew were missing, so he has to recreate them. But he's kind of dumb, and so he has to, like, recreate movies and, like, music. And, like... Or he gets rich, like, and it's poorly like recreating Yeah, exactly. Shit. Like, or he, he doesn't get rich. It's better if he just flop out doing it. I guess it'd be kind of be like... Do you remember Be Kind Rewind? We watched yeah. it with Dad once. No, I remember I was Be thinking Kind it could kind of be like that, where he just has to, like, sloppily recreate everything that he remembers. But since he's doing it from memory, it's all, like, slightly wrong. So, like, he tries to recreate Harry Potter and Voldemort's, like, a woman or something. Maybe not that extreme, but... I know what you mean, though. You know, just like make plot. it, like, goofy instead of, like, serious-ish. But anyway, on with you. Or, like, this guy just becomes, like, the most talented person <laughs> ever because he's, like, doing Beatles songs, <laughs> recreating Harry Potter, and yeah. doing all these movies Shooting and shit. Shooting 2001 Space Odyssey. That would be a pretty interesting, fu funny concept. Because the concept they set up, the way to set up this world where this guy could be living in a world where the Beatles never existed. It put out so many opportunities beyond just, oh, I'm going to do the Beatles. Or I thought, like, maybe he would do, like, other songs. Like, there was that Oasis song. Oh, yeah, Wonderwall. Wonderwall. He played Wonderwall at the talent show, so I figured he'd also do, like, Wonderwall, and it'd mostly be about the Beatles, but he'd do, like, other songs, too. And they'd be like, he's the greatest musician of all time. But the problem is, they even comment on the movie where a lot of the musicians are like, that doesn't make sense, that... What is his song from? The 1960s? Yet he releases it, and it's still the biggest thing ever. Yeah, the Ed Sheeran did dick sucking is pretty and off putting, too. Part of it, too, was that, like. When Ed Sheeran he, becomes a main character for, like, a fourth in the movie? Yeah, he kind of comes and goes. But another thing, too, is, like, a big part of the reason the Beatles got famous was A, the time period. B, they were able to perform the music really well, and the music was written pretty well, even though I don't think, like, the writing and the songs... They have a lot of great songs, but a lot of it's how they performed it, their yeah. image... They were the fucking Pokemon of the things. 60s. They were the Pokemon of the 60s, where this Indian dude comes out and does pitchy versions of their songs. He might get on indie radio, might get a Tiny Desk concert with NPR, might be on NPR constantly, but he's not gonna... 
I think something they could have done to kind of alleviate that problem is if they had a, like, a line from someone, like maybe the TV show host, where they talk about how the songs feel familiar, you know? Just kind of yeah. like, maybe people kind of remember it deep, deep down, and that's why they're attracted to it, but instead they're just like, he's the greatest songwriter to ever live, because he wrote fucking Twist and Shout, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't think Twist and Shell would become the biggest song in the world these days. But, I don't know. There were parts that were kind of fun, like when he was doing the music and stuff, but I could just never get past my suspension of disbelief, unfortunately, in ways. Also, I thought, I got really annoyed, like, they tried to frame it as a joke, where they're like, I want a Coke, and it's like, Coke doesn't exist here, and he's like, I guess I'll have Pepsi, and then there's Pepsi cans everywhere <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. And the part that really made me cringe, spoiler alert, is when he meets a 78-year-old John Lennon. Oh, that part's hard to the watch. The setup to the scene is he tracks down John Lennon, who's still alive because he was never famous. Yeah, because for some shows reason... Shows up at his house. For some reason, the other two people in the entire universe who remembered the Beatles knew where John Lennon lived. Yeah, but John Lennon in this movie is like a wide, wise hippie wizard a la Gandalf <laughs> who just takes him into his house... And they like walk around, and he's like, Yeah, a thousand generations, your father created Beatles music, or whatever. But like, it was just cheesy. Then he like hugs John Lennon. John Lennon's like, I hope you get the clarity you need. And then he's like, I'm not gonna be taking credit for other people's work, but the other people don't exist. So, so the movie ends with him going on stage and admitting that he stole the music from the Beatles. Yeah. Who no one's heard of and there's no record of. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking and then everyone would just think he was him. like a fucking crazy person. Then everyone's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And, and his career is life. just over. And he's like, can't the music label ladies like, oh no, this is all ruined. But it's like, they would look into it and just be like, this dude's fucking insane. Like, there's no such thing as the fucking Beatles. Yeah, exactly. And he would still be incredible. And he becomes the most famous musician. And then immediately after, he's able to just be a music teacher. Yeah, at a fucking elementary school, no less. And then his friend, who starts dating, is the girl that he's liked for 20 years, but is too base cocked to be able to ask her out. It's yeah, just, like, just like, it's like, okay. Uh, I know you love her, so it's fine. I'd be like, I'd be pissed if my friend came and just absolutely cucked me. Yeah, like, but do you want to gets... masturbate in the corner of the room while he fucks your girlfriend, Then he too? just randomly gets with her sister in the epilogue. Yeah. So it all works out in the end, I guess. Yeah, no, it was fucking bizarre. And I think they were, like, engaged, too, or some bullshit. Yeah, she was getting married to him. That was the plot line. Yeah. So she's like, tough. okay, I pick Indian guy instead of you. And the guy's like, that's fine. Like, if my fiancé left me for another man I wouldn't like smile and nod and be like it's okay I'll be cucked because you made some good songs the Beatles songs he made this is the man who made twist and shout of course he can fuck my wife while I this masturbate is the man who made the octopus garden <laughs> yeah no I thought it was kind of ironic there was a lot of shit where I was like okay and it just felt weird it might have been nice if like like he visited like an actual beetle i wouldn't have cringed so hard but since or not yeah, not that john lennon, john lennon but like they you couldn't know, get paul mccartney they they like fucking had to go george i don't know if they weird cgi'd him or just found him a look-alike it's probably just like prosthetic and shit prosthetic and bullshit to make this dude look like john lennon but wouldn't it have yeah. been so much easier to just meet paul paul yeah. mccartney I mean, maybe it's better fan service to some people to see John Lennon, but to me it just felt awkward, creepy, and cringeworthy, because John Lennon had no idea this movie was made. It's kind of like when you toss, like, someone who's dead in, like, in the Disney movies, because no one's ever <laughs> actually dead in Disney, and you can just pop them up in CGI. It's uh, like seeing that. Yeah. But it's just fucking creepy and weird. If it was, like, a... Like, I don't mind if John Lennon shows up in a biopic now. Because John Lennon's dead. Yeah. He's not going to be able to okay it. But that's a story of his life. It's a different thing entirely. To when you're saying, oh, fiction. good thing. Good thing you didn't get killed in this universe. Yeah, no, didn't it get was shot so in the back fucking of the weird. <laughs> and it added nothing but fan service. Or even fucking Ringo. Put Ringo in the fucking movie. If you couldn't. I mean, I guess Ringo if doesn't Paul really get busy. seen as the wise guy. But Paul could be like, oh. I got blisters on my fingers, but I think the Beatles were just happy to get the check, so they weren't too worried about it. Honestly, 
Yeah. So, Aiden, what are your thoughts on this movie? Uh, it's all right. I mean, some of the covers are okay. The concept is good, but the execution isn't very good. Uh, the last half kind of sinks down into being like just the romance shit, which gets old. And I don't know. If this movie was more of a comedy, if this movie was more of a comedy, I'd probably be okay with it if it had more goofiness, but instead it plays it pretty serious. And there's no real drama except for the fact that he was just like too pussy to ask out the girl the entire for 20 movie. 20 years. And then I guess like the drama of him deciding to not be a fake. Uh, the part where Ed Sheeran becomes a main character for a while and they're like, he was the greatest songwriter in the world before you started writing Beatles songs is pretty, uh... Cringe. It's tacky. <laughs> uh -huh. I just think it's funny that in a Beatles movie they can get Ed Sheeran, but they can't get fucking Paul McCartney. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean... I'm pretty ambivalent to the movie. I wouldn't say I really disliked it, but it was long and I didn't really like it either, so. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, would you recommend Yesterday? I would not recommend Yesterday. I honestly found it to be a pretty awful movie. I thought the music, that the, they recreated the music pretty poorly. The movie was fucking weird. The characters were fucking weird. Literally, we follow an incel that becomes a Beatles character. The most based cucked incel. And then at the end of the movie, the only arc he has is that he's gonna look like a deranged lunatic and he's gonna quit being based <laughs> cucked and instead based cuck his producer. The end. So basically, I thought this movie was fucking awful. When I left the theater, I was like, eh. Well, and then I thought about it later and I was like, it's awful. <laughs> No, I said no oh, earlier, sorry. didn't I? That wasn't Maybe I didn't. I don't know. No, I, I think it was lost. pretty obvious. I thought this movie was garbage. Uh, yeah, I think I also would not recommend this movie. Unless you're like super, super diehard Beatles, I guess. You might kind of enjoy but the covers. I enjoy but I enjoy the Beatles like quite good. a bit, and the covers were just kind of trash. Like, if you want to listen to yeah. trash covers of the Beatles, why don't you just watch the Justice League trailer? But anyway, since we're talking about this, we might as well, uh, Connor, you saw Toy Story 4. You want to give us a real quick rundown of the plot, your thoughts, and if you'd recommend it? I did not see Toy Story 4, so this one's I'll, on you real quick. I'll be pretty brief about my thoughts on Toy Story 4. I also saw Rocket. I guess I could talk about Rocket Man here, too. Uh, yeah, we'll just stick them all the <laughs> at the end of yesterday, because, you know, you gotta watch something. Well, I'll call this one the Toy Story 4 one. Just stick the crap in <laughs> <laughs> he wants to see at the end of the title. Yeah. Uh, Toy Story 4 follows prim the old toys, but primarily Woody, as he goes on an adventure to save uh, Bonnie's new toy... Forky, after Forky abandons the group, thinking that he's trash, uh, he tries to convince Forky that he's an important toy, like he used to be to Andy, and Woody kind of slowly realizes that he hasn't, that he's kind of outgrown, he's not the favorite toy anymore, he's not that important to Bonnie, and maybe he's outgrown the life of being a toy to a person. Can I interject and then for a second? He Bonnie meets. seems like a little bitch. At the end of Toy Story 3, Andy was gonna keep Woody, and then she's like, give me the fucking cowboy, and he's like, take extra special care of him, because he's my favorite, and then she's like, you know what, Woody, you're fucking trash. And Pretty much. In the closet. Pretty much what happened, actually. <laughs> uh, so Woody sits in the closet, and then he helps Bonnie be creative and create Forky, and then she disregards him as trash, but he runs into Bo Peep from the first Toy Story movie, and he's like, oh, what's up, Bo Peep? Been a minute. And then they reignite their friendship, and he makes a bunch of friends with the lost toys, and he realizes that he kind of wants to be a lost toy, so at the end of the movie, he separates from the group and goes to be with boy Bo Peep. It's a little villain plot with this toy, but it turns out to be like a misunderstanding thing. The villain was pretty cool. Ish. It was kind of an interesting like side plot. Kind of felt like more time to pack into the movie, but it actually kind of had something else to the plot that didn't just make this like a 30 minute movie or a 45 minute. <laughs> Where's Forky the old time movie? Yeah. 
and uh, I liked I really liked the new characters in this movie uh, I liked how Woody was in this movie but it kind of neglected the old characters I heard people say like Buzz was an idiot in this one it's like yeah but Buzz was an idiot in all the Toy Story movies Woody just tells him to listen to his voice and that'll help and that's the best way to help him so he keeps pressing his his little action button and like tell him what to do and then he would just keep following whatever his button did which I thought was kind of funny maybe they made Buzz a little more retarded than I would have liked but it wasn't really Buzz's movie and I feel like they wanted to do something with Buzz to make him more important because like Jesse, Rex, the others, Mr. Potato Head and shit they didn't do anything in this movie, but Buzz is like the other face of this franchise. They kind of so find they, something for him to do. <laughs> they need to find something for him to do. So they kind of just had that comedic stuff. So I kind of get why they did it. I wish they might have been able to handle it with Mark Grace, but eh, I was fine with it. I thought they did a pretty good job overall, and I thought it was probably the most interesting we've seen Woody. I actually, like, I don't think it's as a sen- Like, I think Toy Story 3, you can watch the first three Toy Stories and it's a good ending to the series. But I don't think Toy St- I feel like if you want to watch more Toy Story, Toy Story 4 is definitely worth watching. Uh, I don't really watch Pixar movies anymore because I think most of them are kind of garbage. But I actually think it's worth watching, especially for people nostalgic to the Toy Story series. So, I'd recommend it. Thumb up thumbs up from me I'd recommend it give it a watch and the other movie I saw that Aiden hasn't watched was Rocket Man um, Rocket Man's pretty much the uh, career of Elton John between the start of him learning music in his childhood to when he came out of rehab and kind of cleaned up his act uh, I'm not gonna go too much into the plot whatever but uh, I thought it was a pretty okay movie on a scale um, straight out of Compton to all eyes on me, where does it land? <laughs> um, it's not as good as straight out of Compton, but it's far better than all eyes on me. I wouldn't really... Con- it is a music biopic, but it doesn't feel as much like a music biopic. It's honestly more like a musical, because there's a lot of like hmm. surrealist shit, which I feel like is because Elton kind of John neat. was like a producer on it, so like, shit'll happen... And then, like, maybe he'll start playing music and then, like, something will happen. Like, there's one point where he's doing his first concert and he starts, like, floating around the stage and shit. It felt like something that they would do in, like, a stage show. Oh, that's kind of neat. Which is good and bad. It makes it kind of more, like, entertaining because I feel like it could have just felt like a flat music pick. Which I thought, uh, Kingsman guy, forget his name right now, it's beyond me. He did a pretty good job as Elton John, and he sang all the songs, and he did a really good job. Apparently, the dude's a pretty good singer, because a lot of it sounded very good. Unlike yesterday, they were actually covers that I would say are worth listening to if you're an Elton John fan. But, yeah, there was a lot of, like, surrealist stuff. Um, It was kind of cool, because it didn't always paint Elton John in, like, a positive light, but you kind of see where he's coming from. And the surrealist stuff was kind of cool and kind of separated it from the other stuff. That said, if they took the same script, modified it slightly, and made it into a stage play, I would almost think that was cooler than watching it as a movie. Because I was watching yeah. it and I was kind of torn because I was like, this is pretty good, but it feels like a like a musical or something. Rather than... Because like a lot of the times he would like... like Instead of just like progressing like five years later, he would like be playing a song... And the song would kind of go into like a montage type thing, and it would transition. Hmm. So I think like Crocodile Rock he played when he was like a kid or a teenager, and then it kind of transitioned to him being more of an adult. I think that's where they did it. I don't remember 100% because it's been a few weeks, but no, it was good. Uh, I, well I thought the music was all pretty well done. It wasn't like the greatest movie I've ever seen. Um, it's not like if you're just looking for like a straight out of Compton style where it's like informative and less surreal, you're not really gonna get that here. But I feel like for a personality like Elton John, it would be kind of boring if they just kind of did it like 
by the numbers and didn't do all the weird kind of surrealist shit with it so i thought it was pretty cool not that it wasn't informative and in like what's actually happening right now which i did kind of feel at a couple points where i'm like what is going on kind of because you'll like be like mid-song then after a montage it comes out and it's god knows how much later you don't know what album he's working on or anything it doesn't really f it has points where it focuses on the music production mostly at the start but not so much i don't know overall i thought it was pretty cool i'd recommend it for people that like like elton john songs and uh there were a lot of really cool movie or really cool moments in the movie and i thought it was one of the more interesting music biopics there are in my opinion. So I would recommend Rocket Man. Yeah. Cool.